And welcome once again to Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast. I'm Charles Skaggs, barely at the moment, but uh, and with me as always, my partner in crime and my partner in time, Jesse Jackson. Hello, Charles. Hello, Next Stop Everywhere fans. Um, we're recording this on a tense day, aren't we, Charles? It's a little nerve wracking. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, uh, one of two reasons. One, because as you probably can tell by my voice, I'm on the DL a little bit. Uh, got a little cold that hit me at the end of last week that my lovely wife Lori gave me. So thanks, hon. But uh, hopefully it's not too bad. It's just a cold. Um, sounds worse than it is. And then two, uh, for those who do not follow the baseball, uh, this is kind of a big night especially for me, because it's uh, Game 5 of the World Series. The Indians are leading in the series 3-1, to one, which means if you follow baseball that they only need one more game to clinch the World Series, their first since 1954. Kind of a big deal for me as a Cleveland Indians fan, so go Tribe. That's all yes, I can say. Absolutely. Um, so in a very timey-wimey when this comes out, we will have already known – we will have known the results. One way, one way or the other. Right, like yes. If, if they end up choking the rest of the series or if they yeah. win um, – yeah, we'll know one way or the other. But hopefully if the baseball co- gods are finally kind to the Indians. Yes. So – and uh, the other thing, um, we – Charles if and everybody, I – If everybody gives Joe Boo rum, if you've seen the movie uh, – yeah. Major League. Right. Um, would love um, – I, I would have loved uh, that um, if they could have um, had Charlie Sheen throw a pitch out or, you know, kind of made a little bit of significance. He, he, sh- he, should, he should walk out, you know, like he did. Um, like, you know, they, he comes out of the dugout or something yeah. with his glasses on to Wild Thing. Yeah. And, you know, just uh, – you know, kind of like takes the mound before the game and waves yeah. hi to everybody. That'd be funny. Absolutely. Um, so we're before we get into our Doctor Who episode discussion, I did want yes. to bring up that, um, you know, uh, there was a fake news story out about Hillary not liking Doctor Who, and it was pretty fun. Um, I I quoted I I posted that she should bring Charles and I. To wherever she's going to be after November, and put us in the room, watch Blink with us, and we'd convert her. But it turned out to be a fake story. Yes, it did. If you if you noticed, there was an asterisk. Yes. By that email, email yes. supposed email, and then yeah. at the bottom of the article, yeah. it says uh, veracity of email not verified. Right. So, um, yes. So if you fell for that, my sympathies. Yes, but it was funny. It almost got me, but not quite. Yes. Uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up, and um, this made Charles smile, as you guys are well aware, my other passion slash obsession is Bruce Springsteen. And a Michael Han, uh, writing for The Guardian in um, United Kingdom, had a pretty in-depth interview with Bruce on that was published um, actually today, October 30th. And the opening line of the article is, Bruce Springsteen exists at that rarefied level of fame where you get to move like a Dalek without ever actually having to touch anything. And the point was that when you're that famous, everyone opens doors for you and you just right. kind of walk in. But I said – that does this mean that does this mean that Bruce Springsteen can't go upstairs? Yeah, if, I want I don't know. I watch well, him unless he, unless he levitates. Yeah, I watch him climb uh, pianos and such. Yeah. Uh, what is? I just think that was such telling that um, the Daleks and Doctor Who is so mainstream in the UK 
that a music writer, you know, a music critic in a mainstream article would write that. So I just thought that was wonderful. Yeah, it's kind of like over here if uh, someone references Star Trek. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 the it's the it's Britain's go-to pop culture reference like Star Trek over there. Absolutely. Um, so, um, which gives yeah, that's us awesome. A, yeah, which gives us a nice segue. Yeah, exactly. Because of Daleks. Speaking of Daleks, for those yes. who came here for the Doctor Who stuff. Yes. Sorry, one. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Daleks, the very first Dalek story from uh, 1963. Uh, written by Dalek creator Terry Nation, directed by Christopher Barry and Richard Martin, the second serial from season one of Doctor Who, the original classic series. So kind of a big deal. Um, I know Jesse is not the biggest Dalek fan. I can understand that, but this is kind of a big deal in Doctor Who, so I kind of wanted to cover it. And considering our options on iTunes yeah. for watching classic Hartnell stories are dis disappointingly limited, shall yeah. we say. And, you know, I think at times um, they go to the Dalek well a little too often. Is That's my only problem. I don't have a problem right. with the Daleks themselves. Right. Uh, and But I – but this is kind of like the first, you know. I think it time. is fascinating, Charles, mm -hmm. that in the second serial, you know, this right. uh, section, you come up with the iconic Doctor Who um, monster. I mean, I, I, you would say their their foe might be the Master, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, as far as the monster. I mean, there's a lot of other great people, but I think the Dalek is the defining, right? Wouldn't you say? Right, right. Now, no, Doctor Who had been on for four weeks with the Unearthly Child right. serial, but it's here where Doctor Who finally finds its voice. Yes. As a series, this is this is where they hit their first home run out of the park, and the Daleks, whether you like them or not. They caught on with the British public. Dal I mean, this is what they called Dalek mania back in the day. Yeah. You had – you started off with kids and impersonating the Daleks on the playground. Yeah. And that just kind of caught on to like a, like a pop culture phenomenon, almost like when um, – here in the States when you had the Adam West Batman show right. up. And that kind of Batmania was going on. Yeah. It's Dalek mania over there, and this is what got – kind of jump-started Doctor Who into the mainstream well, awareness. And, and for us casual fans, um, or you know, more of the modern, I guess right. you can't call me classic anymore, but the great made-for-TV movie for the 50th anniversary, you know, they show that where um, the kid's playing the Dalek, and, and you know, right. uh, it is... You know, You're talking it, about a, 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 an adventure in space and time. time. Yes. Yeah. There yeah. is a great scene uh, where Hartnell is like in a playground or at a park, and kids are playing, and he, you know, they're ecstatic. So, so I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, also, doing a little research on this, uh, you know, I don't understand how this worked, but someone when talked about it that um, the creator, um, you know, the Guy Terry, who Terry yeah, Terry did, somehow negotiated rights on this, and so if you'll notice, much as they say, you know, Critton, you know, Batman created by Bob Kane, and now right. they've recently they've said Bill Finger, which with with is Bill Finger, with, but, but that's they don't say and Bill Finger, yeah, but, yeah. which it, which is a step in the right direction, right? Or you know, because because most people know that really. Bill Finger created Batman, but Bob Kane got the credit. Right. And, uh, you know, and also, you know, um, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. So you, you love seeing this kind of things. And um, so I think that's very cool. And I think the other thing about this, Charles, is to a certain degree, everything about the Daleks is right there from the beginning. I mean, I think they do a little tweaking down the road, but overall, this is, you know, the mode the, of what they're the, going to be. 
yeah, the basic elements are there. I mean, you've got you. We get Scaro introduced for the first time. Right. Uh, the the Daleks. You kind of get their 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 introduction of their racial hatred. Right. Which is a big component of of why they do what they do. Um, you get the introduction of the Thals, yes. which are um, not the not a major story element when it comes to future Dalek stories, but they occasionally reference the Thals right. and, and bring them back. So you you get the introduction of that there was kind of a civil war going on, right? And which plays which gets developed further in the story Genesis of the Daleks in the Tom Baker era, mm-hmm. when you kind of get kind of get the full origin of the Daleks. And we also see that civil war um, in the Capaldi episode this past season. Um, you know, yes, where, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, Magician's Apprentice. And, yes, yeah, yeah. So all that said, I didn't like the episode that much. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, um. So. Um, but we'll get to that. Go ahead. It, continue. It is, your... it, is, it is seven episodes. Um, it's a bit long, I, so I get that. But uh, we'll get into that. Yes. So, um, so let's uh, let's dive into our discussion. Um, we kind of did a general overview, so I won't go into that further. Okay. Excuse me. But um, let's dive into the oncoming storm. The Doctor meets the Daleks. So here we have the first time the doctor encounters the daleks and uh i kind of wanted to get your thoughts on that so you know i'm watching this and i go he doesn't know they're evil no you know we know they're evil but at the time you know you put your glasses in i'm seeing this for the first time you know he doesn't you know and i love the discussion of i wonder if there's someone inside that metal shell you know, and so um, it 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 was very cool seeing that, and the interactions between them. Um, I loved that even this early, they used the word exterminate. Now they don't do the classic exterminate, exterminate, but they do use right. that phrase that you know someone picked up later, and um, it. It's very cool to see this origin story. Right. You know, I mean, the and and unlike um, the classic, you know, we do not truly know the origin of the Joker. There right. is a lot of different versions floating out there. Um, and, you know, the Killing Joke is one of my personal favorites, but none of that's canon. Um you know, we, you know, with the whole Red Hood thing and everything, you you actually, they keep changing the Luthor, you know, Lex Luthor, Superman, you know, that origin. Right. To think that we're plus 50 years mm-hmm. and this is the beginning was, I, I'm, I want to stress you, I enjoyed watching the episode. So I, I'm glad you picked it. This was not painful to watch at all. You know, I, I enjoyed it. It just wasn't as captivating as the past two classic of those who have. And I'll tell you why when we get to that part. That's fair. That's fair enough. I think. Yeah. Um, you brought up a good point that we didn't know who the Daleks were right. at this point, because and especially the audience. The audience had never seen Daleks before. You know, we're looking back through like 50 plus years of history. Yeah. So we've got this preconceived notion, but audiences at the at the time when this first aired, they didn't know who the Daleks were. They thought they were just, just these mysterious beings. Yeah. And the Doctor and the, his companions had never encountered the Daleks before, so they didn't know either. So we're all kind of getting introduced to the fact that you know you've got these, you know. Um, Nazi allegories. Um, yes, you know, in science fiction terms, that they're yeah. allegories to the Nazis. You know, introduced for the first time, so you know they don't know what to make. They, they, at at first, you know, the the Doctor and his companions are like they don't know who to trust the Thals or do we trust the Daleks? Yeah, or what have you. Susan's kind of duped at first. 
by the Daleks, and then they in, eventually reveal themselves to be have the ulterior motive, of course. But uh, and as you said, I mean, with with Doctor Who, there's not a lot of retconning going on where where the origins get tweaked over time. It's kind of one of to Doctor Who's credit that they're able to kind of incorporate elements from 50 years ago into modern day storytelling. Yeah, and the and because, I think that's a, that shows better writing because you're not just ignoring what happened and replacing it with your own idea. And we go back to once again take a drink, our love of James Robinson's Starman. Right. You know that how he uh, is which I think is one of the best examples of a comic cre- writer trying to do that. Uh, I love that fact. I love that you know they're like, "Oh, we have you know, we we want to help you. We want to, you know, take care of you." And and it was just I they were really and I could see the surprise or I could see the satisfaction as an audience when they show just the two Daleks talking together and, you know, are you really going to save them? No, that serum is for us. We will, you know, kill them. And, you know, I could just see, you know, a little kid going over to his brother or sister or to his dad. Oh, I know I didn't trust them. Oh, I did. You know, it was just yeah. that joy of them finding out that, oh, they're they're – Double crossing evil right. monsters. Right, yeah. exactly. And I think that's what helps capture their imagination because they figured that out. Yes. And uh, the um, one thing I wanted to run past you, or at least talk about, is that because this is the Doctor's first encounter with the Daleks, mm-hmm. is he responsible for unleashing the Daleks on the universe? Because if you think about it, if he hadn't gotten curious about the city, the Dalek city, wanted, right. he didn't want to go exploring, he wouldn't have gone through all those shenanigans with the fluid link. Yeah. And they wouldn't have gone to the Dalek city where they wouldn't have encountered the Daleks, and the Daleks wouldn't un- realize that there's a time machine. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And uh, wouldn't have kind of gone out into the universe. I, I think that is a really good question to debate. Um, I guess the counter argument is that they may have found a different way anyway. That you know that time right. sometimes cannot be rewritten when it's convenient for us. And so uh, – but, but I, I kind of I consider this one of the doctor's biggest mistakes. I, I, I can see that. I totally agree with that. And, through, and his I, own, through his own arrogance. Yes, and, and this – at least in this episode, the first doctor is very arrogant. Yes, he is. Um, almost to the unlikable – Right. You know, the the doctor tends to have arrogant moments. Right. But it's only like particularly the um, the first and then the sixth doctors. Right. That really show off that arrogance. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Um, To a a greater degree. Yes, absolutely. But yeah, I just Um, uh, it just it just struck me. It strikes me as I watch the story. I was just like, well, you know, if he just would have, uh, you know, agreed to go elsewhere in the TARDIS. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't have encountered the Daleks. The Daleks wouldn't have found out about Earth. Right. And so on. Yeah, it's kind of like the Big Bang Theory of if Indiana Jones had just not done anything. Right. Nothing – wouldn't have – none of this would have been, you know that, – That whole cycle of events. It's, yeah. It's that kind of ripples through time as we talk right. about well, – as, as Doctor Who fans. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree with you, and I there's think – There's that ripple effect, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's that's I had not thought of that, but now that you bring it up, totally agree. Well, thank you. Yeah, good I appreciate point. That. All right. Um, anything else you want to talk about with the Doctor meeting the Daleks? No, I know. I think I'm good. Okay. Now, the Daleks at this stage, you know, if you notice, they haven't quite been figured out as characters yet. Right. Because they're still like 
they have them running on static electricity. Yes, I thought that was you know, interesting. Through, through, the, through the metal floors. Right. So they, can't, so they can't leave the city. Obviously, they get over that. Yes. Because, hey, if we need the dogs to go out. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the dogs were really intended as a one off. Oh, yeah. But I think because they caught on with the kids. Yeah. And became so popular that that's why they brought them back in the Dalek invasion of Earth, mm -hmm. a much bigger story, which we've talked about already here right. and stuff everywhere. Yes. But um, – and I think you liked that story quite a bit. I did. If you, I recall correctly. Yeah. So um, so they kind of got like you – know, they stepped up their game and got become a much bigger, bigger imposing threat yeah. to the universe. So I think it's just, yeah, that – it's kind of interesting that, well, you know, you can kind of see where they would just forget about the Daleks and that would be it. Yeah. But they were just so popular. They brought them back. Do you have in your research, Charles, um, has there been talk about why they did the no hands and the kind of, um, you know, the plunger and the, you know, egg beater kind of? Well, I just think it was just the, the designer came up okay. with that. Just, yeah. just kind of okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm now you know. Oh, a little tidbit. Yes. Um, the um, director of Blade Runner. Okay. Uh, Ridley Scott. Mm -hmm. Was once a designer on Doctor Who, and was almost the designer responsible for designing the Daleks. Oh, interesting. That's a little, yeah, he just happened to not be selected. Some other another uh, designer, Ray Cusick, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, was selected as designer, but yeah. So, just a little tidbit that uh, Ridley Scott almost designed the Daleks. That's very slick. Um, I am, I'm catching up on some podcasts, and um, Stephen Moffat and Brian uh, Fuller, and then I can't think of the third guy, was on a panel at Comic Con. Right. And the Nerdist Writers Panel sent it, and very interesting, great discussion, um, and uh, was funny. One of the questions was, what show have you not written for that you'd like to? And Brian Fuller said, um, I will tell you right now, Stephen wants to write for Star Trek. <laughs> he just does whether he wants to or not. Right. Uh, at the time, Brian Fuller was going to run, be the showrunner of the new Star Trek episode. Yeah, Discovery. And recently, yeah. uh, he's, st he's still producing. Yes, he is. Uh, the American Gods. American Gods is taking a little bit more time. Of his. But yeah. um, Moffat went on a thing about, okay, you know, um, uh, you know, Scaro, right? Um, right. Hands. What? What? What part of an opposable thumb and four fingers did you not get? And it was he was really funny. It was a discussion. So uh, I think it's it's interesting to see them, you know, and I'll keep crossing pop culture references. My brother is going through Farscape for the first time, right? And he's saying they're just stupid Muppets, and I said. Stick with it, and I said, I will tell you, by the time you're into the second season, you quit thinking of them as puppets, and they truly are just characters, You know, in, at least in my opinion. I mean, I'm caught up into it, and I said the same thing. I think when you first see a Dalek in a modern era, you go, wow, that's kind of dumb, but as you get immersed in the Doctor Who universe, you just truly see what they are. These right. horrible, you know, killing machines and a fascinating uh, design that, yes, has changed a little bit through technology and design, but in a it's lot of ways, it's been, it's been refined. Yeah, but it's pretty much the same. Yeah, which is well, it's, cool. It, it's, a, it's such an iconic image. Yes, that it doesn't. I mean, they Moffat tried to Moffat and Gatiss, Mark Gatiss tried to kind of change things with victory of the Daleks that, right. that Smith story, yes. you know, with those much larger, yeah. like iPod colored right. Daleks and the rainbow with the rainbow colors. Yeah. And it got such a horrible reaction because it didn't look like the Daleks. Right. You know, they look, you know, big and cumbersome mm -hmm. and it just didn't feel right. Yeah. So that, so they went back to the original 
the previous design. Yeah. And I think it's just because it's just such an iconic image. If you go too far with it, people aren't going to accept right. it. I know so, that when they, they were talking about with uh, Paul McGann's um, proposed Doctor Who series, yeah. there was some initial Dalek designs where they were kind of like spider-like. Oh, interesting. With with like you know like eight legs or whatever you know like and they would like the doll inst- instead of having like the they would be more like um, I don't know if they would be more like puppet like or CG mm-hmm. design uh, because remember this is 1996 it wasn't quite refined yet yeah so it just may have been more puppet like but you had um, it was a much more um, organic design. Mm-hmm. That they proposed with this, and uh, it would have been interesting to see, but it, I don't think it would have felt like the Daleks. No, I don't, and I I agree. I think it's an iconic look, and I think it's so it it plungers and all. It's there. yeah, it I, is. It, it's you, there. You kind of got to roll with it, and you do. And and I love I love when people go to conventions and. Um, Especially a lot of female cosplayers will have the uh, Dalek skirt on, you know, with the globes, and right. it just is it it looks amazing every time. It, I, I it, smile every time I see that. It's this kind of like Art Deco image. Yes, that really captures the imagination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. I, you just aren't sure, you know. It's amazing you got lightning in a bottle that early. Right. So. And it, it, obviously the show needed it. And remember, Doctor Who was originally supposed to be like a, histor- a way for teach kids about history. Right. But with the Daleks, this story, it, because it caught on so big, yeah. this was like the first inclination that, okay, maybe we're not going to stick with the historical right. as much. Yeah. And that got gradually pretty quickly phased out over the course of the first – couple of doctors yeah absolutely all right uh let's move on to our next topic and uh, this could be a probably a pretty quick topic uh the earthling invasion of scaro my play on the dalek invasion of earth yes um ian and barbara all right so so this is our this is where ian and barbara's first trip to an alien planet yes so in a lot of ways, the companion makes the doctor. Mm-hmm. I do not like these companions in this really? episode. I do not like Ian. I do not like Barbara, and I darn sure don't like Susan. Um, now I know we've seen an, a later episode, and I liked Ian and Barbara in Dalek Invasion. Yeah. Earth. So I so I get that they're trying to find their way. Right, but um, this is only the second story. After. Exactly, and it it felt like you said that this is how they hit their first home run. I think they haven't found their voice yet. You have your doc, you have your companions that don't want to be there. That's totally against the Doctor Who formula. So. Um, well, Seuss, to be fair, they were kind of like kids. Oh, oh, I I understand. They I, just and, want to get home, but yeah, they can't. Right, and and I I get that. And in a lot of ways, this feels like um, Lost in Space, Time exactly. Tunnel. It it is a common Gilligan's Island. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I was yeah I was going to stick with science fiction, but yes. Um, and so um, I I just didn't. Quantum Leap, how's that? Yeah, no, no, yeah, good. And I just, I, I felt Susan was weaker than I wanted to see her. Right. And um, them kind of not being, it, it just, I think that was my biggest problem with the episode, is that it's not the Doctor Who I want to see. Right. Um, you know, I and and it's and I understand in context. You know, it's. I think we talked about this before. You know, sometimes someone will see a classic movie and they'll go, "Wow, that's all been done before." Yes, because they did it first. Exactly. <laughs> so I understand there. You're coming through that story. So I just don't like this part of the story as much because 
and it makes total sense. You know, they had not planned to go this. I thought the doctor had a good point. You know, they didn't, they didn't want to go to the Dalek City. The do- yeah. doctor manipulated yeah. them into going. Well, and they really didn't even want to go in the TARDIS. No, nope. right? I mean, this they was... were just they were just concerned about Susan. Right. And then all of a sudden, the doctor takes off. Right. So, so you were already a fan when you went back and saw these. What are your thoughts about them? Tell me – give me a counter-argument to – or what your thoughts are them as a gang. Because – Well, I, well as, with, Susan, with Susan, I can understand your point because I think with Carol Ann Ford, the actress who plays Susan, I think that's one of the reasons she left the show so early. Yeah. Um, if I recall correctly – and correct me if I'm wrong, guys um, – I think Susan was pitched to her as a um, – as a kind of like a Wesley Crusher type mm-hmm. where, you know, like because she's she's very intelligent yeah, um, and, you know, that that she's very curious. Yeah. So and here she is presented in this story, especially um, she's this 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 overreacting um, panicky teenager. Yes. And. That's, and it's very in a very unflattering light. I think that's one of the. I think this is that depiction. They didn't know what to do with because they wanted to play up the doctor. Right. And this could have been the sexism of the '60s at the time. Oh, absolutely. Play, I have no doubt that they they wanted to promote the doctor as the smart one. So therefore, right. we have to make uh, a Susan this poor, helpless teenager that needs rescuing. All yeah. The time. Yeah. And I don't think Carolyn Ford was into that. Oh, and I could see why. I mean, I can understand as an actress, oh, you know, I don't want to do this, you know, that kind of row. What are your thoughts on Barbara and Ian? Well, Barbara, Barbara, it's really interesting because, you know, when we talk about Doctor Who, you know, that the, the – and we just talked about the Doctor meeting the Daleks for the first time. Yeah. A little trivia bit that we find out, it's – Actually, Barbara, who encounters the Daleks first. Yes. And there's a very iconic Doctor Who image that I wanted to talk about with you. It's at the end of episode one. Okay. When Barbara is kind of like down in the in the tunnels of the Dalek City, and she's wandering around trying to figure out how to get back. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, she comes across that first Dalek. Yeah. And there's it's and it was. Shot so well, I thought, because you, all you see is the plunger yes. coming forward, and you, you're looking at it from the Dalek's point of view coming at her. Yeah. So you're kind of like looking through the Dalek's eye stalk. Yes. And all you see is Susan looking back at the camera, looking horrified. Yeah. And it's just such this – I mean it's basically like the first real terrifying moment on Doctor Who. Right. So that's why I, th- I see this as a, and it's kind of like one of those images that when you see these like um, like Doctor Who YouTube like retrospective videos, right? It's one of those images that gets included because it is that kind of iconic moment. Yeah, I totally agree. That was a great cliffhanger. Um, a there are spe- some good cliffhangers in this. Yeah, it is. Um, like I said, I did not ever get bored. Um, you know, it was a you know seven episodes, and we're kind of moving along. And I actually thought, you know, it's a pretty decent story, right? Um, and I think with a few tweaks, I mean, this really could be. It is very. It feels of the time. While other classic episodes we've watched, there's a little bit of like the sexism. About well, we can't have the women go downstairs, you know, and right. you know you need to stay here. But in a lot of ways, it's just a little better story. This felt a little bit more like a, and I keep going back to a time tunnel episode. Yep. Which, by the way, I loved time tunnel as a kid. You know, I can remember it being on actual network, not just on the reruns. You know, and uh, so it's it's very very. Um, in a lot of ways, dated. It feels a little dated. Do you? Well, sure. There's some dated yeah. moments in this story. Yeah. I won't. I won't dispute that. I mean, yeah. it was made in 1963. How right. Can, sure. Like the you know the Thal costumes and all kinds of stuff feel yeah. dated. But um, if you're able to kind of push that aside, right? I think. Yeah. Um, 
it's just a trick of whether you can or not, and that's yeah, that's, and, that's, that's that's purely subjective. And yeah, I and I, and I'm not talking about the sets or the costuming. The story just isn't right. as feel as fresh as well, some I of think, the other I th- things. I think being seven parts, it could have been tightened up. Yeah, maybe a little. Uh, I agree. You know, like I think it could have been easily shortened to six or maybe five, really. And I do love, and I don't know if I'm jumping ahead on your agenda, but I do love the whole idea that you know they're pacifists. Right. And that they don't want to fight. And and, and that, that was and that was one of the things I want to talk about with Ian. Yeah. Because Ian has a big moment where he they're trying to get the Thals, who are pacifists, to help right. them fight the Daleks. Yeah. And all they want to do is kinda of like lay around and and whatnot. Yeah. They're not very motivated. Right. And um Ian has to kind of goad the leader. Um, to kind of step up by because he threatens to like okay well I guess I'll just take your you know yeah this girl back to yeah. the Daleks and you, since you're pacifist you won't do anything about it right and that kind of riles him enough to you know take a swing at Ian yes and that's the kind of catalyst to like well okay I guess we're not pacifist after all right okay, okay I guess we'll help now mm-hmm. yes very cool. But, but yeah, Ian kind of has to take a take a punch there to get that that moving. And he does, um, in a lot of ways, um, you know, he and we've talked about this before. In a lot of ways, he's, you know, he plays the lead in a right. lot of ways. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and there's a scene. Um, uh, later in the story, where you know they're going through the secret tunnels to the get in, in underground tunnels to get into the Dalek city, mm-hmm. where they have to cross this big chasm, and one of the Thals is like this really big coward. Yeah, like no, no, I can't cross, I can't jump. Ian talks him into like, okay, just here's the rope, tie it around your waist. Yeah, you know, don't worry, I've got you. <laughs> it's cool. So he, the coward guy, really reluctantly jumps across, but he, of course he misses, yeah, and, and falls into the chasm. But he's got the rope on, but it's cutting it into Ian, mm-hmm. and Ian almost kind of sacrifices his own life because he's holding on to styrofoam rock. I say yeah. styrofoam rock when, yeah. you, when he digs his nails in, you can hear the styrofoam. <laughs> rock. Um, I do think he rocks a cardigan sweater, though. Well. I'm just saying. Ian is the epitome of 60s cool. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So very nice. And you know, that's he becomes uh, headmaster, or you know, the of yes. of uh, um, Coal Hill School, as we yes. find out later on. Uh, yeah. um, but um, but uh, yeah, it's, but but there and there, the guy ends up like the rope breaks, and the guy falls into the chasm. So Ian kind of gets a little guilt, has to feel a little guilt over yes. talking to the guy into. Jumping and then he ends up dying. Right. So that's kind of on Ian because all yes. the other guy just wanted to go home and Ian talked him into coming forward. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Absolutely. All right. Let's move on. Uh, who wore it better? The Daleks, this story, versus Doctor Who and the Daleks, the Peter Cushing <sighs> movie, which we covered before. Yes. And, um, because I said uh, Doctor Who the Daleks, as as we've talked about, is basically just a big budget remake yeah. on screen of this story, the Daleks. And I don't know, maybe if I watched the movie again, I would like it more. Right. But um, I don't think I would, because <laughs> I remember this was, you know. Well, well, do you see? Do you understand my frustration though? When we talked about Doctor Who and the Daleks. Yeah. Of. Because of I watched the Daleks, yeah. How frustrating it is to watch Doctor Who and the Daleks after that. Yes, absolutely. I totally agree. Because it is, you know, you took like this serious story. Yes. And like Ian, Ian on the TV show, I think is a as much as you don't like him, I think he's way better than Ian and Doctor Who and the Daleks. Oh, and and what I don't like about them is their they're a little bit whining about, I just want to go home, right. you know? 
Um, and, and it's because I want my companion to want to be with the doctor. Understand in context why it wasn't be, but I think that's one of the things that – And that takes, changes over time though. Yes, it, I'm sure it does. Right. Like I said, this is that point in the journey where it, it's, I'm getting through that transition, right? Right. Yeah. But uh, – <coughs> excuse me. The um, – By the way, I wanted to go back for a minute. Um, if you go to Wikipedia right. and look up the Daleks, the episode about this – the photo is the iconic plunger and Barbara doing this against yep. the wall. You know, it, yep. that, yep. that, that, that is the I told image. You it's, the, it's the iconic image. from that Oh, show. absolutely. Yeah. Um, because it's just that, that first horrifying, the alien threats coming yeah. at you and we can't see what it is because we right. haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. So what is it? What is com what's coming at us? So um, also, you know, on a side note, Charles, I did like the fact that every episode had its own little title, yeah. you know that, and I see why well, they got that, away with that later. But for now, that's, that's a, kind of fun. That's a really good point to bring up because um, the there's been a lot of debate among fans about what to call this story. Yeah, because as you know, they they um, did originally they did different episode titles for right. each episode, as opposed to like part one, part two, part three. So originally, the first episode is called The Dead Planet. Yeah. And a lot of fans kind of refer to it as The Dead Planet instead of The Daleks. Um, the production, when when this was um, aired, they referred to the story as The Mutants. Uh-huh. But um, there's a later John Pertwee-era story called The Mutants. Mm-hmm. So um, – because of that, a lot of people don't refer to it as the mutants anymore. Yeah. So they they I think there was a kind of a collective, the general collective decision was to call it the Daleks because hey, it's the first episode, first yeah. story with the Daleks makes perfect sense. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what's interesting, um, you talked about this, but as I'm looking at Wikipedia, which you know is never wrong. No, um, never. <laughs> the ratings consistently go up on these episodes that you know people had to be taught you know and there's no dvrs right. there's vcrs this, and you know is, just kids talking about going hey man um you gotta you gotta go check this out this was so. like the first like kid water cooler show oh yes where, absolutely. Where, you know like you gotta watch this yeah and that's what yeah just caught on the episode of, because Remember, there wasn't a lot of science fiction on TV, especially British TV. Back yeah, then. exactly. So this yeah. is like, wow, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I agree. Got, the kids told their friends, and that's what helped build Doctor Who, which is why we're talking about it here at Next Stop Everywhere 50 years later. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Um, and uh, as far as the, the movie, real quick, um, you know, you know, Susan's obviously different. Um, I know she's. I think she's a lot more effective in the movie. Interesting enough, as yes. a little girl, right? Than Susan is here. Yes, it makes uh, a little more sense. And Barbara is actually like actually is a character on the TV show versus mm -hmm. Barbara in the movie, who's just background scenery essentially. Right. Window dressing. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Let's. Move. So, uh, anything else about the story you want to talk about? Uh, no, we, I think it we covered was covered quite a bit. Yeah, I think it was like I said, it was um it, it would not have it would not have said, "Ooh, I need to see more." Right. You know, uh but as far as and you'll see that in my ratings as a it was an entertaining couple hours and when you throw in the significance of this and how much it continues to influence us um, really well served. Good pick as always. Well, thank you. Well, the uh, and for those who maybe if you watch this story and you're you're not familiar, it does end on a cliffhanger. Yes, it does. With, with everybody getting knocked out inside the TARDIS. Yeah. And that picks up in a story called The Edge of Destruction, mm -hmm. which hopefully if iTunes gets their act together, <laughs> maybe we could cover someday. Okay. Yeah. So very nice. All right. Uh, do you have so what, some quotes? I do have some quotes. Why don't you go ahead and start? All right. Um, I did love um, 
the one of the the Thaw leader saying there is no indignity in being afraid to die, but there is a terrible shame in being afraid to live. That's a great quote. Yeah, and you know, get busy living or get busy dying is how they put it in. Uh, you know, I figured that was yeah. a very motivational quote. Actually, I, I didn't pick it because I had okay. a feeling you would pick that. All right, good. Thank you. You, you. you seem to, you seem to love the motivational. Quotes. I do. Yes, I am. All right. How about you? Which is, which is no problem. I get yes. that. Totally get that. Yeah. Um, my first quote is from Ian, mm -hmm. where he's talking with Barbara about the doctor. Yeah. And he says. We better keep an eye on him. He seems to have a knack of getting himself into trouble. <laughs> I did like that, Which, and I which smiled. Is like that's a, duh, a, a, yes, right there because yes, he does have a knack of getting himself yeah, into trouble. Absolutely. Uh, and Ian picks up on that right away. Yeah, it is uh, another one that I liked. Um, is and this is I love when the doctor is being cocky, but I don't like him arrogant. You know, there, there's right. this fine mix but i love it, when he says yeah. go ahead what were you saying no i was just gonna say it's a very fine line yeah yep. my dear child haven't you realized what i've done a few simple tools a superior brain and that's a very doctor quote <laughs> yes it, it was um there's an encounter between the doctor and the daleks um where the daleks say uh now we know of the machine we can examine it for ourselves and the doctor replies, but you can't operate it without me. The Daleks respond, every problem has a solution. By the way, good Dalek. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was really nice. I That's like the that. Congestion. Yeah, the back and forth. Um, my last one is, you wanted advice, you said? I never give it, never. But I might just say this to you. Always search for truth. My truth is in the stars and yours is here. And... I think that talks a lot about even in this early thoughts of the doctor, the writers were shooting for something more. Right. You know, they, they were trying to do not just a history lesson or not just um, Lost in Space, which is fun popcorn, but, you know, right. it's it just doesn't have the depth of what I think the doctor – Doctor Who is trying to do. Well, I kind of saw the the potential. Yes. And and they kind of um, it's it's a great attempt to make um, Hartnell's Doctor not just this crotchety old man that's right. bickers with everybody. Yes. Um, it, it, for lack of a better word, it humanizes him. Yeah. And it makes him more it makes him more accessible to the uh, the audience. And you know, just a you just want to. You know, and I almost felt bad saying anything – I felt bad saying something bad, um, criticizing it, because this is a founding father of Hootam. I right. mean, you know, it is – and and so – Keep in mind that – keep in mind they're still finding their feet. Yeah, exactly, and so – So you, you have to kind of take that into account, I think. You know, and I, I think – um, it's, like, it's like those first few episodes of Star Trek. Yeah. You know, and the other thing, right, that um, we just talked about, um, I w you know, before the season started, there some stuff came out about um, the guy from Ohio State, Elliot, who's yeah, now a running back. Ezekiel Elliot. Yeah, yeah. And, and someone said, you know, do you want to be judged on how you acted as a 21-year-old? So, you know, at times I think, you know, this show is in its infancy, and so they're finding their way, and which is just – it when you think about – this is really their fifth episode because yeah. you, you had four, or and, and they're shooting for this kind of story is amazing. It's a, I mean, yeah, it's a huge – I mean the previous yeah. story was about cavemen. In yeah. The, and now here we are. We're on an alien planet with all kinds of weird yeah. alien creatures. Yeah, and talking about radiating the whole planet so because they need that radiation to live. And, exactly. and, and we're this. talking about neutron bombs and yeah. all kinds of – Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, awesome. it's crazy. Yeah, okay. So it just kind of shows you the, 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 the scope and potential of Doctor Who Absolutely. early it, on. Any other quotes? 
Uh, no, that was – you took my last one. But that's okay, okay. okay. That's okay. I give you it. I'll give All right. You thank you. All right. So what's your rating? All right. So I, – I figure it's a little low. So that's Yeah. Um, so that's I'm, okay. I'm giving two ratings. Okay. Um, as a standalone episode, uh, you know, I give it six vials of mercury. Okay. But when you look at it in context and what it means to the Doctor Who universe – and how much of this, um, you know, where we are in the journey, um, where you, you're trying to build this world. You're building a classic villain. You're building the doctor and the companion relationship. And, you know, this is really um, the doctor's first time to have a companion, too. So, you know, he's learning how to take care of a pet – yeah, that's, so well, to that's speak. A, that's a that's a great point because before he just it's been him and Susan, right? And now he's kind of stuck with these two right. dim-witted Earthlings. Yeah, and I think he's learning why that's important and everything. So when you throw that all in there, my grade as your partner in crime is I give it eight bacon and egg food cubes. Okay. And Very I nice. want Very nice. I want to bring back the food dispenser. That's just so fun. <laughs> well, they had to kind of explain like, well, okay, well, how do they eat on the TARDIS? Yes, exactly. So, so they came yeah. up with that. So, okay. How about you, uh, Charles? Uh, obviously, I'm a little more generous. Yes. Uh, but uh, I give this one eight and a half out of ten petrified trees. Ah, very nice. Thank Good. You. Very cool. All right. All right. So. Uh, so next time. Well, actually, no, I yeah. should say we're, we're going to do our reverse to reverse the polarity. Yes. So before we answer. Yes. I sent you my. You did. Yes. And was I close? I'd say you were batting a thousand. <laughs> yeah. To keep it in the baseball theme. Yes, That's it is. Um, yes. Actually, uh, Jesse, to his credit, and I do have his email. That uh, he was pre- trying to predict which episode I would discuss in the reverse, the reverse, the polarity. And he was absolutely correct. Uh, we're going to talk about Dalek. That's my recommendation. If you enjoyed this, the Daleks, we're going to go to da- Dalek episode six from C- series one in 2005, uh, written by Robert Shearman. And for those who realize this, uh, or may not realize this, but you probably realize this. This was the first appearance of the Daleks in the modern era. Now, there was some original concern that the Daleks would not be able to return in the modern era because they, um, the BBC was trying to ha- work things out with um, Terry, Nation estate, Terry Nation's estate. Yeah. And for a while there, it was looking like we wouldn't get the Daleks. Which was a horrifying thought. Oh, wow, yeah. But thankfully they worked it out, and uh, we got the Daleks, even in Eccleston's first season, which was great, mm-hmm. considering he only had one episode. So we still get to continue right. the Doctor's meeting the Daleks, um, which was great. So uh, in this story, uh, we have um, the Ninth Doctor and Rose arriving in a massive underground bunker in Salt Lake City, Utah in 2012. Keep in mind, this is like seven years in the future back then. Yes. Um, they're drawn there by a distress signal being transmitted from the bunker. And so they start looking around all these alien artifacts that are set up in like display cases and whatnot. The doctor sees like a Cyberman head and they're like, ah, it's a Cyberman head. So old fans can geek out. Right. Um, they end up getting surrounded by soldiers who take them to see this guy named Henry Van Staten who is this real douche owner of the collection. Yes. Uh, the doctor talks to Van Staten while Rose tours the facility with this technician named Adam Mitchell, who turns out to be a bit of a problem in the next story. The yes, long he does. The forgotten companion, as I like to call him. Right. Uh, Van Staten wants the doctor's opinion on the, uh, the pride of his collection, which he calls the Metaltron. Mm-hmm. Because obviously it's a, a Metal Tron, right? Right. Yeah, that right. makes sense. Yeah, great name. Um, I don't know how he came up with that one. So he orders uh, the Doctor locked into the vault with uh, the Metal Tron. The Doctor's horrified to find out that, oh, guess what? It's actually a Dalek, which he thought was wiped out during the Time War. Yeah. 
So you've got the Ninth Doctor who's full of rage with the Daleks after his time as the War Doctor during the Time War. Yeah. And this hatred of the Daleks. Basically, he hates the Daleks as much as the Daleks hate him. At yes. This uh, the Doctor finds out that the Daleks weakened and chained down, unable to find ba- fight back. Uh, meanwhile, you've got Adam taking Rose to the vault to see the Dalek, which she immediately feels sorry for because it's Rose. Yes. And she ends up touching its outer casing. The Dalek absorbs her DNA and the time energy she's been exposed to traveling in the TARDIS, which kind of gave basically jump starts the, da- the Dalek. Right. Uh, the Dalek becomes re-energized, plugs itself into the electrical grid, draws power from all over the western United States to recharge itself. Mm-hmm. That's got to be one hell of a battery life. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it rebuilds its casing, breaks the chains um, that were holding it, escapes. Dalek's on the loose. Look out. Better run up some stairs. The Daleks chase Adam and Rose up some stairs. But, of course, the Dalek can levitate. Surprise, right. everybody. And uh, kills the guards along the way. Uh, the Dalek ends up finding out, figuring out that it can't exterminate Rose, and is kind of disturbed by all these new human emotions that have incorporated itself into the Dalek from absorbing Rose's DNA. Mm-hmm. So it's now is repulsed by what it is. Right. And it asks Rose to self, like basically, to order it to self-destruct. She reluctantly agrees. The Dalek self-destructs its mechani- self-destruct mechanism and explodes, or implodes rather. Yeah. And you that's know, basically it. And then Adam goes off with the TARDIS and does really stupid things. Yes. With- what um, what were your feelings when you watched this? You know, originally when you saw it. I mean, were you were you really happy? Uh, obviously, you're happy they brought back the Dalek. But were right. after the story, were you were you pleased how they brought this back and the execution? Very much so, um, because last time I'd seen a Dalek was in 1988, yeah, during wow. the the 25th anniversary of Doctor Who and Remembrance of the Daleks. Yeah, we kind of got them teased in 1996 at the beginning, right. um, when uh, the Master is being put on trial in Scarrow in that little prelude, yeah, where they have the little Smurf voices or whatever, the little chick right. voices, but we didn't really see them, so we didn't really get the Daleks. So this mm-hmm. is their first time in like over 20 oh, – but just about 20 years. Wow. And um, the the design I thought was beautiful compared yeah. to what we had in the in the original series. Yeah. Um, that, that kind of bronze finish looked really cool, especially yeah. with the modern lighting. Yeah. And it showed just how dangerous just one Dalek could be. Right. So, I mean, that's basically what it is. It's it's not just this Dalek army, because when you're, normally when you've seen Daleks in the past, it's been a bunch of them. Right. Here we have just one, and shows how much danger, like, how much of a threat, because essentially it's a roving tank. Yeah. That now can levitate, and, you know, can fire these energy weapons, and can basically trash a complex, in, like, just like that. You know, one of the things I was really impressed um, cause you know, I'm mainstreaming, you know, I'm binge watching this, um, and, and I got the significance, um, they really, per- they portrayed that how much the doctor hated this person, this right. creature, and this, the, you know, and now that we've seen the war doctor, there's even more depth to that, which once again, the beauty of the writing that you're able to do that. Yeah, I, I thought this was, and you actually feel for that Dalek a little bit. You do, and and you, it, it just is really well done. And once again, the more you see uh, Christopher Eccleston's depth yep. as the Doctor, the more you go, I love Tennant, I love Matt Smith, I love Peter Capaldi. But man, a world if, if, where if, we'd gotten a couple more seasons sure would have been cool. That's a that's one of the biggest if onlys in Doctor Who yeah. history. Yeah, um, we're gonna have to talk about the story. I think at one one point. Yeah, I think so too. In, in the future, I know you're not a you know we you're 
overloaded on Daleks. But yeah, maybe... but we've we've had the summer off, so I'm okay. Right. We're, we're doing that. Yeah, I. So, hey, so we'll o- have to. Obi Wan, we'll I trust you wherever we need to go as we mix well, our metaphors. Well, I'll just say we'll have to talk about that down the road. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, next time on Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor yes. Who podcast, um, we've got uh, kind of like some stuff coming up, like such as a Christmas special. Yes, we do. So I don't want to quite dive into um, what I'd like to do our bi- next big project, which is to go through a multi arc, okay, uh, multi story arc Doctor Who right. story. Um, you know, that takes place over the course of several stories. Right. So um, to kind of help fill the gap, um, I'd like to propose that we talk about a, a go back to the modern era. Okay. With a big story you may know as the Eleventh Hour. Ooh, yes. Matt, Matt Smith's first story, and I think it'd be fun to talk about. I haven't watched it for a while. It's kind of a big deal, so I think there's plenty to talk about there. You know, I do too, and I think that's an excellent choice, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, no spoilers. You were right. able to find through um, the magical viewing mirror. Yep. Uh, you did get to see class, and right. then yeah, yeah and yeah. then uh, I did not get the way to see it, and um, so no spoilers, but in yeah. a couple of minutes, what'd you think? Yeah, um, just to give everybody some background. Originally, we were going to talk about the first episode of Class for tonight. We might die. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that didn't work out because the BBC was all over um, YouTube and all kinds of other video sources, like nobody's business. It was very hard to track down. So I tracked it down on Daily Motion and watched it there. But, of course, then it ended up getting taken off of Daily yeah. Motion. So, fortunately, I was able to see it. But, unfortunately, Jesse had not right. by the time I was able to, like, get back to him. Um, so, uh, I said, okay, you know, like, I'm like this obviously isn't going to work. We need to talk about something else. Right. And then we tried to – I pitched some, another story, Hartnell's story called The War Machines. Yes. But that didn't work because iTunes has a really horrible William Hartnell collection. <laughs> yes, they so, do. So get your act together, iTunes. Yes. There's a lot of great Hartnell stories that are out there if you would just post them. Absolutely. So um, so we went with what they had, the Daleks being one of them. So that's why we talked about the Daleks. And that was a good choice. I, you know, I think it, for a plan it's a, B, it's, it was really well done. It's, yes. it's a big deal. It but, is. Uh, so, yeah. So class? All right. So class, yes. Getting back to the original topic. Um for tonight we might die. It's basically the introduction to the kids. Yeah. Uh, this mysterious character called Miss Quill, and without giving any spoilers away, um, the Doctor shows up about halfway through the episode. He's there for about ten minutes. Okay. Um, and Capaldi, it's this first episode without giving spoilers away. I think it's worth watching if only for Peter Capaldi as the twelfth Doctor. Okay. Now, whether um, you think it's continuing worth continuing after that, I'll leave up to you guys. Okay. Um, I'm personally not sure if I'm going to continue with this. Wow. I, okay. I could, I could watch it if it's on, you know, like if if I'm looking for something to watch, but I'm not going to go out of my way to look okay. at it because I don't see a really direct impact on Doctor Who beyond okay. this first episode. Okay. Now, if that changes later on, maybe if they bring in some Doctor Who monsters or whatever okay. later on, I, I would revisit that. But right now, I don't see I, – I think it's worth watching the first episode, but I'm not sure it's worth okay. – as a doc to cover like here okay. after that. All right. Well, then we will wait and see. And uh, so, in I know that – yeah, the BBC America is supposed to air it legitimately in April. Yeah. Which is kind of ridiculous because, you know – there's going to be a lot of torrenting going on, I'm sure. Yeah. So it's kind of foolish on BBC America's part. I know they did their best to crush it, but yeah. it'll get out there eventually. Absolutely. Okay. Before April. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds good. Uh, Charles, so, how so – Next time, yeah. uh, the 11th hour. Oh, that sounds perfect. So, Charles, tell us uh, how they can reach us on the show to give us feedback. Yeah. Uh, so you can reach us at Next Stop Everywhere SMG at gmail.com. Um, 
if you drop us a line there, I'd be curious because we hardly ever get email there. No, we do not. But uh, otherwise, you can reach us on Facebook, which a lot of people like to reach us on Facebook, and that's yes. cool. Um, at our Facebook account, Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast. Uh, or you can reach us on Twitter, at Next Stop SMG on Twitter. Yes. And feel free to drop us a line there. Let us know what you think. Uh, let us know of some stories you'd like us to cover at some point. Yes. That would be cool. That would be. Or just, or just, you know, just tell us how you're doing and what Doctor Who you're watching. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be cool. And if for some of our British fans, if you have seen uh, Class, let us know what you think. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah those, those of you who have had seen it in the UK. Yeah. Or elsewhere because it was kind of like all, all over the world except for the United States. Yeah, that's I, I'm I think BBC America. So not just the UK. This is open yeah. to everybody. Just let us yeah. know what you thought of class. That'd be yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, I can be reached at Jesse Jackson DFW on Twitter. I am Jesse Jackson from Louisville, Texas on Facebook, um, and so certainly check me out. Um, as I'm talking Bruce Springsteen, we're doing a lot of episodes about people that made the appearances, the book appearances, and got to see. And we're talking about them seeing him uh, finish the autobiography and feeling good about that. So uh, that's what I got going on. That's and Charles, did, how did, about you, your... did you like the autobiography? I liked it a lot. And, you know, obviously I'm going in biased. Um, like, I'm going to like the Christmas special. Surprise, right? right? When we see the Christmas special, right. you know, it is very rare there is new Doctor Who where I go, wow, that was bad. Um, but I was really surprised. He was very open. He talked a lot about his his childhood and his bouts with depression. He would said the things I wanted to talk about. He talked about his first marriage a little bit. Because Tunnel of Love is one of my favorite albums, and that album is about his marriage breaking apart. And then he talked a, a, a fair amount of his relationship with the band and the decision to kind of um, disband them uh, after Tunnel of Love and then getting it back together and a lot of that dynamic. So it was very good. I liked it a lot. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So um, for me, you yes. can reach me at Charles Skaggs on the Twitter machine mm -hmm. or at Charles Skaggs on Instagram, uh, Facebook, of course, Google Plus for all you crazy kids on the Google Plus. Shout out to Karen. Yes. And my blog of geeky things, Damn Good Coffee and Hot. Yes. Where I talk about Doctor Who and Next Stop Everywhere and all kinds of comics on TV. Shows uh, yeah. which I uh, which I also talk about on the Fandom Zone podcast, which I do with friend of the show Karen Lindsay. Yes, and uh, really That's loved cool. you guys talking about uh, Supergirl right. and Superman joining. That was a fun discussion. Um, really good stuff. Yep. Yep. In episode eighty, which we just recorded last night in a marathon session of yes three hours. Gosh. Uh, but we talk about the big Walking Dead Season 7 premiere. Oh, nice. So episode 80, if you're interested. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Uh, check that out. Cool. All right. So that'll about do it for now. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you, guys, for your, all your help in getting me through this episode. Well, thank you, Charles. It did not um, – your voice stood well. Good I'm luck, sorry, Tribe. Yeah, uh, good luck, Tribe. Uh, that would so, be fun. Well, Hopefully we have a world, a Cleveland Indians World Series championship to celebrate next time. Yes, just like on um, fingers crossed. On um, oh, what was the um, jumpers? Was that the sliders? Uh, sliders, yes, yeah, sliders. Because I remember they made the joke about uh, oh, this was the wrong. He thought he they thought they were back to the world, uh, and the um. The front gate didn't squeak because his mother put oil, and uh, they had said the Cleveland Indians are in the World Series. You know this is an alternate universe, so <laughs> yes. Uh, so thank you, Charles. Good luck. Uh, I'm going to say keep hope alive, and the moment we forget that we're dealing with people, that we're no better off than the machines that we came here to destroy, when we start acting and thinking like the Daleks, Torin, the battle is lost. Very nice. Thanks, guys. Talk to you Bye, soon. Bye, everyone.
Good morning, Charles. Oh, I see. No Doctor Who today, Indians. Nope. Not with not with uh, Game Five tonight. Wow, that is it's oh, a big deal. It is yeah, a very rocking, big deal. Rocking my old school jersey. Oh, nice. 